What could we deliberately do to help expand the understanding of the fivefold ministry currents within our context? We have developed and periodically carry out a workshop called Foundation for Fullness, in which we convey the biblical call for fivefold ministry. Also, we take teams on assignment in which they discover and they develop new expressions of their gifting, new, by submitting them in with others. See, when we work with others on a team, different things happen because we set aside momentarily that individual mentality. We call this working together synaxis, and it is often a new paradigm of ministering that particularly worshipers and prophetic intercessors seem very drawn to. We, very strategically, we send multi-gifted teams on assignment. It greatly increases the outcomes and including activation and growth and relationships. It's wonderful. A third thing we do that it expands the understanding of fivefold in our territory is at the head of every month, we hold an open regional online session in which we focus on what would the Lord speak to his kingdom people for this month to prosper in their fields of harvest? What would he speak to us to warn us for the month ahead? And uh, it's, we believe, becoming more and more effective in pu pushing back darkness. We want to give God a gathering that he can remember all month and that we can remember all month. And move in that revelation, it really informs everything that we do all month. I looked at what uh, Alan Hirsch and Tim Ketchum were quoted as a saying from the permanent revolution. And that is that apostles in the generic sense are those sent to pioneer something new. Well, I couldn't agree more. That is right. Embassy of Zion keeps moving and embracing change. We eat change to breakfast, as we say. We identify as pioneers and prototype makers. Uh, we know others will come behind us and do it better, and we celebrate that. Meanwhile, we keep moving forward toward the front of the changing church in our era. We believe that what we do prophetically and apostolically cuts open a way, makes every ministry in the territory hopefully more effective opening in the spiritual atmosphere for the glory of God to come in, changing the atmosphere, bringing freedom in the atmosphere. And we believe it impacts many people that we don't know and they don't know us, but we're trying to do our part, trusting they're going to do their part in what God is conducting in this beautiful orchestra. And again, Dr. Caballero quotes uh, Hirsch and Ketchum describing the evangelist in the fivefold function. And that description uh, the evangelist requires extravagant love for everyone, and hospitality opens the door for evangelism. And it's important to listen to stories and enter into true conversations. Yes, amen. Don't disagree with that a bit. However, we look at, we put in the fivefold, we put apostolic in front of each of these words. Apostolic evangelism has an expression to us that would be one of equipping and training. In our view, the, ap the apostolic evangelist would equip the saints for works of ministry, and that would be evangelism. Importantly, uh, in our view, because we're very team-oriented, we see that the evangelists would spark teams to do outreaches, such as come to the table using hospitality, where together they can hold an atmosphere for the presence of the Lord. So visitors come in to the um, dinner being served that night, knowing full well we are going to um, invite the Lord to come and to see because any good thing can happen in his presence. The evangelist, the apostolic evangelist, would have the anointing to spark that in groups. We do not see, uh, and the apostolic fivefold, and a kind of evangelism that says, oh, good, this person got saved. I'll move on to the next one. Good, that person's saved. See ya. Good luck out there, kid. Moves on to the next one. No, no way. Because we are linked together jointly, uh, fit like ligaments, ligamented is a word we made up, that we're all ligamented together, moving together as a body, the body of Christ. And so that evangelist, someone gets saved, they can't wait to introduce them to the pastor who's going to help them identify their identity in Christ, introduce them to the prophet who could speak into their life's vision, introduce them to the teacher who could help them 
discern the word of God and learn to hear the voice of Holy Spirit. So this the, all these things, we put apostolic in front of the word and it has a, a meaning of training and equipping for functions rather than that person alone doing that work of ministry. Teachers likewise, uh, Catchem and Hearst say, teachers are those who are effective trainers and inspires of learning. Well, yes, they certainly are. They have a unique gift to explain difficult concepts in a way that makes understanding easy. Well, yes, on the fivefold foundation, apostolic teachers are ones who can train people to approach the word interacting with holy spirit and hear his voice how precious for for individuals and synaxis groups to open the word of god together and have the holy spirit illuminate and hi highlight it in a way that produces for activity, fruit, activation, some kind of moving with that, opening up a new understanding. Uh, God is infinitely, infinitely uh, resourceful and able to move us, keep us moving. Those teachers are critical for that purpose. So similarly with prophecy, we're looking at territorial prophecy and for the, the apostolic pastor, again, the ability to pull forward from that person the best that they have and to a, in an unfolding way get to know who God has made them to be and how how can they serve on a team how how what are what is their particular anointing in this part of their life where they can learn to hone skills and and have an opportunity to practice in a safe environment uh, where they are um, coached and loved on and encouraged <clears throat> 